bust a myth about that wool panels or fiberglass panels much better than foam panels. You need to actually measure gas transmission coefficient. It's about how panel effective at lower frequencies. I'm gonna give you mathematical formulas today. We even gonna calculate how thick your panel should be. Even foam panel can be effective, but there are many nuances to explain. So check this video out. It's amazing. It's one of the best audio production and audio mixing courses. Right now on the screen you can see 145 five stars reviews verified by the Google. It's not like that Reddit forum who post different nonsense about me and delete all supporting comments. These real people verified by the phone numbers and emails. The idea of my course to bust all this nonsense and all this bullshit going on in audio production world. Pure mathematics and real audio engineering. Remember, one time a week I release full less than 100 minutes or 10% of it for free on my channel. Read about how my teaching system works and how to buy full lessons in the first pin comment or in the description. So myth number one, fiberglass is better than foam. It's one of the most controversial topics in audio production. People, for some reason, really like this. They just hear something seems like smart. That's it. They completely sold out on it and they start to like hate the other product or the other nuances, not even understanding the whole list of principles. Another actually quite common thing. Nowadays, everybody play on this idea like, oh, cutting low mid frequencies very narrow with equalizers is bullshit. Phase shift. We're gonna be talking about this during this course. I'm gonna show you mathematically what's right, what's wrong, and why statements about linear phase equalizers actually completely exaggeration in many, many cases. It's all about the gas transmission coefficient. So when you say that fiberglass is better than foam, you should only think about what gas transmission coefficient each panel has and how thick panel to really accommodate proper frequencies to absorb it. So that's why just saying, oh, fiberglass is better than foam, it absolutely has nothing to do with the acoustics of your studio. It only potential statement that potentially fiberglass may have better characteristics to handle reflections in your room. But they actually, fiberglass completely sucks if it's too thin. It will never handle any low reflections. Even upper bass and low reflections in low frequencies will not be handled by fiberglass. What you're talking about? It's audio engineering. Engineering means mathematics. Let's imagine any frequency has its own waveform. Any waveform usually looks like this. It has movement up and down and back. Any frequency, let's say 350 cycles, 350 hertz has its own cycle. So it's one cycle the next cycle, the next cycle. The higher frequency is, the waveform is shorter. The lower frequency is, the length of the waveform is longer, right? So we're gonna mention it under this picture, we're gonna say it's length of the frequency. Next, each waveform has a couple of important places on its waveform. This place over here, it's called pressure zone. And its maximum amplitude, let's say, on the top of this waveform over here. It's actually quite complicated statement, but roughly speaking, it's a velocity zone. Listen to this strange statement. Velocity of the waveform is a vector which magnitude is the speed of sound. Sounds strange, but it's true. So basically, this is a velocity zone. So your panel, soft panel, either fiberglass or foam, works actually with velocity zone, not with pressure zone. The effect of soft panels usually works with this principle. I copy and paste from my notes to this photo file. So soft panels should cover quarter of a frequency waveform length to be effective. And of course, gas transmission coefficient will influence this efficiency of this rule. But anyway, the point is why it's a quarter exactly. I'm gonna explain over here. This is the length of the waveform. If you divide length of a waveform in four quarters, at the phase 270 degrees, it would be another velocity zone over here, and waveform kind of starts from here and repeats itself again and again and again. So you should have thickness of the soft panel as thick as at least quarter of your waveform which you try to handle. Let's say if your kick drum has fundamental tone 50 cycles, right? It's second harmonic, which you also try to handle. It will be 100 cycles, third harmonic, 150 cycles, which you also want to handle, and so on and so on. High heads, high frequencies, vocal sibilances, 
mid frequencies of the vocal, it all depends on what frequency you want to handle. And it's a side view of your panel. So this is your green panel. And green panel can handle eventually this particular frequency, which has exactly this length. Only if your panel at least this much in terms of thickness. You place this panel next to the wall like this and you can handle this particular frequency as a reflection. Even though your vocal has many, many different high frequencies, sibilances like tss, 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 your vocal has mid frequencies like 1K, 800, which soft panels, no matter if foam panel is or fiberglass, the problem is Vocal, actually, let's say low male voice, my vocal is bass slash baritone. Frequencies of my voice actually can be at those frequencies where waveform will be much longer, like this. And to handle this, my fundamental tone of the vocal, this like kind of like, ooh, like low end of my notes, right? I would need to have much, much thicker panels. They should be as thick as quarter of a waveform. Actually, to be honest, all these standard panels, like two inch foam panels, two inch fiberglass panels, they not necessarily will be very effective even at vocal low notes. And when we're talking about like real low instruments, like bass, like kick drum, which has 50 cycles or 60 cycles fundamental tone. Forget about this, all your two inch panels, even four inch panels will suck big time on all these low frequencies. It's absolutely ineffective panels actually. You over damp mids and highs in your room, but you don't have any control over real lows. Response of your room will be completely shifted and it will be completely influenced what you hear from your studio speakers like direct signal. It will be big mistakes in your studios, to be honest. So if you just think, ha ha ha, foam panel sucks, I would put fiberglass panels. You put your two inch or even four inch fiberglass panels on your walls and it still continues sucking. Sorry, but it's ugly truth. People don't like other people who say ugly truth. You rather believe in the lie to be happy and sleep well at night. But let's be honest, we are here to be a real man and to be realist and to learn real truth, right? I'm gonna copy and paste two other statements from my notes over here. Soft panels can handle lows because quarter of a low frequency is so long that panels need to be so thick. In a second I'm gonna count mathematically how thick they should be. Or we control no lows or we choose the other tech to control lows, not soft panels. So when you say, ah, foam panel, ha ha ha, it's stupid, use some thick panels, even base traps made of fiberglass, so-called super chunks, you put them in the corners of your room, remember those super chunks. So this is super chunks. So you create a frame, then you put fiberglass in this frame, uh, and then eventually they look like this. They will suck, they will not control any lows in your room. Fundamental tone of your kick drum and bass still will be outside of a controlling range for these bass traps. And it's bass traps. If you're just talking about just panels on the side walls, on the front walls and stuff, it will completely suck actually for your room. Second statement over here, either we control no lows or we choose the other tech to control lows not soft panels. So what it means, there are different diaphragmic technologies and even in those you use much thicker and uh, not standard soft panels. On scoring 703 actually too soft, you usually use 705 version of those panels. You trying to put those panels in the pressure zone of your room and you use much thicker panel to damp those real low frequencies. But again, just by the soft panel, you're not gonna stop. You need to use special technologies like diaphragmic absorbers or Helmholtz absorbers. We're gonna talk about this. In the end of each lesson, we have studios at top topic. Now I'm gonna show you how to be a realist. If you believe in unicorns and you're a weak person, maybe don't watch it and go watch any propaganda news or something. But if you want to really understand understand how everything works, with 20 Celsius, speed of sound is roughly 
343 meters per second. Uh, as you know, speed of sound much faster in the solid materials and underwater. The air much more resistive, that's why we enjoy soft panels with air gas transmission coefficient. We enjoy air gap technology and stuff. Now let's imagine you really want to control your studio. Controlling your studio is not controlling just mids and highs. It's really controlling lows as much as mids and highs to keep this like flat response of your room, not crazy shifted towards lows, you know. Then that's why it's very important to control fundamental tones of two of the most powerful instrument in your mix, which is kick and bass. Kick and bass commonly have frequency as a fundamental tone is 50 cycles. It can be 50, 60, it will be roughly close numbers to it anyway. So the formula is this, if you want to understand the length of the waveform of some corresponding frequency you're working with, you should take speed of sound 343 divided by the frequency you try to control. First of all, you will know the length of this waveform. It will be 686 meters. It's the whole waveform. If you're American guys, 7 meters is roughly 20 feet. Just one movement up and down and back and that's it. So this one cycle. Now we know this, to handle this particular frequency, put quarter of the length of a waveform inside of the soft panel. So we need to know how much quarter of this frequency. 686 meters, we divide it by 4, we will know how thick your panel should be. I hope you're gonna fall down from your chair right now to find out how thick your panel should be. It will be 1.75 meters, almost 2 meters, almost 6 feet thickness of your panel. Not width, not length, but thickness. Just imagine, your room, studio room in your home studio can be actually as small as 3 by 4 meters or something like this. 12 by 16 feet, you know. Imagine if you put two meters thick panel, let's say, on the side of your wall. Your panel will be like next to your ear. The air around you will be just... You're gonna go out of the air in like probably five minutes and then you will have nothing to breathe, you know. But your studio room will be perfectly set up. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna claim you really need to have 1.75 meters. If your panel is a bit... And actually one of tricks, you can put your panel a bit out of the wall. You're creating air gap behind the p soft panel. You almost increase effect by two times, you know, by creating some like distance from the panel to the wall. My corner bass traps gigantic. They're so big. When I installed them for the first time in the studio, I was almost scared of how big they are, you know. Uh, you still can rely on foam, but Chinese foam uh, will be with l less quality and less guest transmission coefficient, so you're gonna have less effect even with the same thickness. You take the same thickness, 2 inch, for example, of Oralex, more known and very expensive foam, and yes, it will be more effective than Chinese panels, it's for sure, but it will be less effective than, let's say, wool or fiberglass. Yes, wool and fiberglass is the best, but it's the best only in comparison to foam panel in terms of gas transmission coefficient. Even though they are better, they anyway will be too thin to handle low frequencies and upper bass frequencies from 100 to 200 cycles in your studio. Roughly speaking, from my measurements and experience, is roughly as effective as 2-inch fiberglass. So when people hate Oralex panels or foam panels, of course, they're completely right, but they're not right by buying two thin panels. They buy one inch or two inch foam panels. They put those panels all over the place and then they overdump mids and highs, but they don't control lows at all. In, from this point of view, foam panel sucks big time. You know what I mean? But if you think smartly, and maybe you can use foam panels, but thicker ones, and not everywhere, but just to control some amount of mids and highs, and then you focus on low frequencies mostly, and you use completely different technology other than soft panels, even not fiberglass, not rock wool, not foam, but completely different technology, which I'm gonna explain later, then you may have much better results in your studio. Again, I'm not gonna exaggerate, I saw so many times when people have no acoustic control in their studios and they make amazing mixes. Accidentally, I was 
uh, a witness of situation when a guy on some forum, I don't read forums, I don't uh, watch videos on YouTube of other creators to have my knowledge like pure and genuine. The point is, I actually read some forum related to acoustics exactly just related to one particular company who offered like revolutionary special acoustic treatment and they were explaining all this in their videos and they was posting something on their forums and one guy said yeah it's nice it's so cool but can you listen to my mix in your amazingly set up studio to uh, to say how i did it you know and uh, these owners of this acoustic company with all their products bass traps and diaphragmic absorbers and soft panels they listened to their mix and they said oh it's amazing it's so good everything is so balanced and and the guy replied but I haven't bought your panels yet. I just mixed it in completely empty resonating rooms with 200 bucks monitors. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is, I totally after acoustic treatment. I totally after improvement of your acoustics. But again, it all to some extent. You will never be able to set up your studio to the absolute perfection. In this acoustic traps for for the microphones which stay around the microphone it's also very ineffective they effective in mids and highs but a lot of people don't understand what's going on in lows with these acoustic traps i'm gonna be talking about this later in this parallel studio setup topic which we have in every lesson closer to the to the end of each lesson i sell now let's talk about materials nowadays as the most affordable in america and canada stores you go with fiberglass, not with rock wool, because fiberglass is much more affordable. We have a couple of standards over here. One is called Owens Corning 703. It's for soft panels, thin panels on your side walls, let's say. 705 for base traps, which is much thicker and much more density in the material of this fiberglass. The problem is they both absolutely ineffective at very low frequencies where your kick and bass is. So for this you need to use completely different technology to handle your lows. At the next class I will explain how to handle low frequencies. I'm gonna explain all type of technologies, mass of your walls, what's really going on, how they become diaphragms and how they actually vibrate to even amplify some low reflections. This full lesson contains mixing and mastering topics absolutely phenomenal system arranger rules example where I give you a task and then you need to make a homework and then I show how properly it should be done over 11 years only one guy made it out of 1000 people another part is beat depth and why engineers from 1990s who invented floating point suggest not to use 24 bit but actually 32 bit with floating point see you in the lesson number eight how to buy this full lesson or any other lesson read the description and in the first pin comment see you later guys bye